everybody and welcome to Unfree Reviews. It is December officially of 2021, Christmas around the corner and a new year is in sight. It's been an absolute crazy year, not just for like Hong Kong cinema and entertainment industry, but also just like the world in general kind of thing. COVID-19 is still much a very real thing. In fact, that, you know, the first half of this year, like the first couple of months, we're still in lockdown in the UK. Uh, going back to work was kind of a scary thing. It was very different, very new, lots of regulations. And the fact that this kind of virus pandemic is still playing a big part around not just the UK, but also around the world as well. And to a lot of my friends and subscribers, I hope you are doing well and I hope that you know this virus isn't kind of affecting you too much you know I know this is kind of causing a lot of problems or a lot of people around the world and you know especially with health risks and stuff like that kind of thing and the fact that we were brought back masks in the UK to public transportation and it's just a lot of scary stuff and you know, hopefully 2022 will be a brighter better year and hopefully things can get back to normal properly. On that note, I'd like to say thank you to all my subscribers that have been sticking with the channel, despite my kind of irregular kind of, you know, uploading of videos. I do try my best. I've been getting a really increase in, in tick of uh, subscribers recently for the channel, up to like, I think, additional seven or eight subscribers in the past couple of weeks. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you enjoying my content. And thank you to the amazing Asian Circle group that have been really fantastic and just really dishing out amazing content. I've got a huge kind of watch list pile to catch up on and to kind of you know comment on your videos it's been amazing to see all, all, all your uploads and to see everyone's doing good end to year for me i'm starting a new job soon which will give me a nice kind of like you know regular kind of shift patterns from what i usually am and hopefully more time to actually do more videos for this kind of channel because i'm really struggling to find the time to film edit put together render all that kind of jazz. But for today's Hong Kong video, we're talking about some more Shaw Brothers. Uh, you know, Shaw Brothers kind of library have had a massive kind of increase in terms of their kind of availability with the Arrow Box Set Volume 1 being released in a couple of weeks in the UK. You've also got the ATA kind of Asian collection. Uh, they've been releasing a load of movies from all the way from now all the way to kind of March, I believe. They've got a massive kind of collection of films, weapons, films I've never heard of before, you know, actors and directors and performers that I've just never had the chance to see or kind of any kind of additional format. Uh, these are going brand new kind of 2k scans brand new actors new artwork really kind of five star treatments it's amazing to see you know what kind of content is out there and to hopefully find some really good gems and for today's one i checked out uh, the 88's asian collection newest lineup it was the chinese boxer jimmy wang yu is back baby uh, this film starred jimmy wang yu uh, it's directed by jimmy wang yu and it's written by jimmy wang yu so this is all him everything he's done and if you've watched the channel you know my kind of relationship with jimmy wang yu it's a very interesting one it's an ongoing kind of development and kind of exploring kind of who he is as, a, as an actual actor as a performer as a director and i'm finding different aspects of him and i'm kind of identifying the things i like and things i don't like about him or things that i really, really love about him and the things that i wish they could have done more improve more you know uh, if you watch my previous videos on the one-armed swordsman another short words film really enjoyed the one on swordsman but a really interesting kind of story a great kind of legacy this kind of character and this you know, start of movie has on so many kind of Hong Kong movies. You know, the return of the one on swordsman, also really good, really fun movie, over top, bloody as hell. And you know, that film, this film was released in 1967. You've got this film, which is nice, released in 1970, and then you've got the one on boxer released in 1972. So you've got kind of like a trilogy of movies here, all released within a couple of years of each other, and you're seeing an evolution of his of who he is in terms of as a director, as a performer, as a kind of martial arts fighter, and the, the kind of projects he's involved with in terms of Shaw Brothers, and then eventually going to do his own movie, kind of movies laid down the line, and his kind of influence on all of Hong Kong cinema. So Chinese Boxer is a very interesting one. I did previously own the Blu-ray set itself, but I have sold it to get a full alert uh, from Eureka. I will be doing a review for this and kind of diving into my thoughts and opinions on Ringo Lam's kind of latest films, see if this one offers a little bit more compared to Wild Search. You know, but the fact I've sold the film is saying something so let's go ahead and discuss Jim Rong Yu's Chinese box. <laughs> As previously mentioned, the Chinese book released in 1970. This was uh, two years, about three years before the one on Swordsman, and about two years next to the one on Boxer, which is a quite interesting kind of little trilogy, as previously mentioned. And I kind of find this is a very interesting kind of blueprint to kind of Jimmy Wong use kind of evolution of his movies and his kind of attitude in terms of how he wants to make movies, how he wants to be kind of shown in terms of a martial arts kind of fighter, as a director, as a performer kind of thing. And it's very interesting going to see 
you know, where his strengths and weaknesses lie. And if you've watched my previous videos on the one on Swordsman and one on Boxer, which I did, two films that I, one really, really liked, one I didn't like at all kind of thing, and I kind of cracked why I don't like it. And I'm gonna go into a bit of the story and a bit of why I think works for me personally, what I liked and what I don't like. Chinese Boxer, is, is it kind of ideal to be the perfect movie in this kind of weird kind of little trilogy in a sense of kind of his evolution of movies during that kind of time because it's actually pretty solid I actually did quite enjoy this film for the most part and I can see why he started to go wrong later on and obviously where he ended up doing you know with his individual kind of production company later on doing more kind of cheaper kind of more quicker easier Hong Kong movies and the quality start to dip and I can see why it kind of led down to that kind of path because one thing I like about the one armed swordsman is that his characterization. Jimmy Wang Yu, when he has a character attached to him, is actually pretty solid. You know, despite whatever kind of issues that first film has or any of the kind of sequels kind of thing, the first two movies, uh, One on Swordsman and The Return of One on Swordsman, I actually really like because I'm invested in the character. He actually is a full-on flesh kind of character that has a backstory, who has motivations, who has fears, who has kind of doubts, and he kind of, his interaction between, you know, his friends and the love interest characters, he has these enemies. You kind of, you're with that character for that entire journey and you're with him for his lows and highs and wins and loses kind of thing throughout that entire experience. And same with the kind of the sequel, even though it is ridiculously, insanely badass kind of thing of him. And he's he definitely likes to portray himself as a kind of invincible kind of Superman kind of thing. And I'll get to that more in a little bit. But I think his strength lies when he's actually being directed in the correct way when he's actually showing the right kind of characterization in terms of who he is as a person and I kind of start to realize the issue I have with some of these this one this film Chinese Boxer and especially one arm boxer is that both films doesn't have a character he's not really a character in those two films for most of the Chinese Boxer uh, the first hour I'll say very easily so is mostly based around the villains and he's not really a main character per se he's not really a main protagonist it spends a lot of time building up kind of the treachery and the kind of the villains and these characters and they're over the top and they're slimy you know the storyline follows for one on boxer basically you've got an academy a, you know martial arts school you've got a very greedy kind of you know uh, character that basically wants to use the place as a casino to make some money who wants to kind of you know cheat and gamble and steal kind of thing and be the ruler and make money kind of thing so he hires some Japanese kind of martial art experts and he brings them in to literally kick the effing living asses out of everyone in that kind of little dojo kind of thing like kind of you know little academy of clans kind of thing and uh, this kind of happens very brutally very nastily uh, throughout the film and he realizes he's obviously not strong enough to take him on so he hires people to do it for him and uh, he sees kind of evil schemes and the evil stuff he does and the film is really kind of selling you on how evil these characters are with evil laughs and schemes and the way they talk is a bit unrealistic but it's funny it's kind of like classic kind of Shaw Brothers kind of charm that I kind of do enjoy seeing and you know if you get it right if you get it just right it works it, it really does work and you know there's some films that really have surprised me in terms of the villain characters and the hero characters and the characters in between and the storyline that kind of follows through it and uh, you know the story is actually pretty solid I actually don't mind the story I wish unfortunately for the film it was paced a little better because a lot of the film doesn't, there's not much really going on, if I'm being honest. It's, it's, it's overspending time on these villain characters doing evil stuff. And, you know, you're not having a main protagonist really doing something. Jimmy Wang-Yu's character is not really a, a main character for most of the film. He's kind of shown a little bit, but some of his other kind of, you know, friends in the film kind of things, other kind of like, you know, co-stars, a little bit more kind of present. And, you know, it leads to kind of obviously him becoming the Chinese boxer, becoming this kind of, learning this kind of technique kind of thing and becoming a sort of like a COVID-19 superhero, uh, which is quite funny. Um, and that's kind of the problem I have with it because you, you don't really spend time with this kind of hero character. So when he starts to do the seriously badass stuff he does in the third act of the film, I don't really care. As much as I like that third act and the stuff that happens with it, you know, I'm not really invested in the story. And it's one of the reasons I sold the Blu-ray, if I'm being absolutely honest, because I'm watching this thinking, I'm not invested in what's going on. You know, you've, you're overshowing kind of how evil these characters are, and I get that, but there's nothing, you know, compelling, you know, or kind of tension building building up. And that's one of the biggest things also I would say about some of Jimmy Ryan's movies, 
and the ones who's been directed or non-directed by kind of thing, there is a lack of tension sometimes in his films and lack of clear pacing and you know when the right time to edit or cut down scenes some scenes just linger on for too long there's not much kind of like tension build up there's no epic kind of like you know training or investigation or kind of like you know you know uh, back and forth between kind of his friends or kind of you know, companion characters in the films he's just kind of there at least not we really do much You know, apparently in, in the description on the Blu-ray, it says he, he basically does what he does because he gets revenge on his friend that he kind of lives with. And I think, oh shit, yeah, he did have a friend. And I completely forgot. And he does sort of have a love interest, maybe, sort of-ish. Again, I completely forgot because the film never really focuses on it. It kind of gives you these kind of cutty cooker scenes, um, very quick, easy kind of sequences where he's talking about being oh, adopted or let in kind of thing. And he doesn't there's nothing really else going on apart from those scenes and it's weird um they mentioned you know a bit of foreshadowing in the early, early portion of the film there was a technique kind of thing that someone used to very dangerous and the way he kind of gets the kind of the way the kind of character goes from a student to ultra badass in the third act of the film is a little weird i think being honest and it's something that i think jim wrong you doesn't really care too much about. I think he just likes to focus on the badass nature. The three characters in these kind of three movies with like, you know, Chuck One and Swordsman, you know, Chinese Boxer and One Arm Boxer and probably these other films I haven't seen yet. He likes to be invincible, a Superman, a God, an indestructible kind of character because he does seriously kick ass and it's fun for a while, but it does get a bit old and a bit stale. And this is the problem I had with um, the one on Boxer, because the whole film is nothing but fights every five seconds and series of escalation, but his character is non-existent. The characters in the films are non-existent. The, char the villain characters are just kind of cartoon, wacky characters. And yes, it can be fun. Yes, it can be wacky and you can laugh at it, but after a while, you get bored. For me personally, and my taste within not just Hong Kong cinema, but all films in general, I like a character I can get on board with, or a kind of an idea that I can follow for the film and being really invested in, something I want to really revisit and, re and re explore this character in the Chinese boxer he basically gets left for dead by the kind of Japanese kind of martial arts experts he's kind of a lot of time has gone past he's kind of in recovery he's kind of pissed off he's angry and he puts his arms through this kind of like you know cold process he basically makes his arms invincible kind of thing very similar to what he did in the one on boxer uh, which is very strange making his arm with one arm basically like a, like an invincible metal kind of you know fist and he basically puts on a COVID-19 mask and becomes a wacky superhero and kicking some ass and you know if they invest a bit more time into that and I think that's a bit of a shame I think what could have happened is he's left for dead and you're seeing these kind of random incidents happening throughout the film. You know, characters are being taken out. You've got this character, you, don't, you can't see his face or anything. Maybe he's got additional kind of like, you know, Iron Monkey type armor. And he's going around kicking some ass. You don't know it's him for a little bit until later on. You find out he's gone away for a few months. He's done that training. He's kind of found someone who can teach him the ways that I mentioned at the start of the film. And he's come back to seek revenge. I think that would have been a bit more interesting. But the way they kind of transition that to him being left for dead, kind of not really doing much, just kind of moping around the house, being injured, to basically, you know, crippling his hands and making them invincible to, to not feel pain, and then become a superhero is a bit strange for me. Regardless of this, though, I think the third act of the film is pretty fucking badass, and I think the fights are a lot more memorable. I think the actions are really incredible. I love the three structured fights towards the third act of the film, and it makes, and it honestly saves the entire thing for me. I think from the casino scene, uh, all the way to the kind of the grassy, kind of snowy area, to the mountaintops. Really incredible stuff. Even though he is invincible, even though he does, does, you know, doesn't really take any beating, really. It's really fun and it's really well handled. And the one thing I'll give this film a lot more credit compared to maybe something like the one on Boxer, for instance. You know, I'm not being too mean, hopefully, in that film. Um, I, I like the cinematography in this film. I, I like the, the Foley work. This film, the sound design is really incredible. Every punch, every kind of impact, the quick editing in places, the camera work for kind of like, what, early 70s, uh, you know, kind of late 60s kind of, you know, work. It's really incredible. You know, there's shots and there's ideas and there's things put together in this film that I wasn't really expecting to see. And 
he's definitely got a lot of talent and I really like seeing him when he succeeds and offering a character in the you know a film that really is a lot of fun yeah that's when I kind of really get behind Jim Wong Yu as a kind of as a person and as a kind of filmmaker I just wish he had clearer editing you know more tension to allow the kind of the the character to build up his kind of rage a little bit you know spends way too much time on the villains being evil doing evil stuff is even a kind of a rape sequence which lasts a couple of minutes but it's a bit weird because it's just kind of thrown in there it's not needed it's kind of like over kind of selling the fact that they are evil so when he does the things he does in the third act you know you whip behind him and yes it's bloody as hell which is really fun um, it's some great kind of all-in-one take shots and he's definitely having a lot of fun and I'm having a lot of fun watching it definitely but I just wish you know the investment in the film was a lot more stronger. This definitely is a better film but again when the film is only really rememberable for just mainly fight sequences and you're not really invested in the character or the acting or the story or anything else going on it's just the fights only you know for me I have to question is this something that is worth keeping just for those sequences. So that's my thoughts and opinions on Chinese Boxer, a film that is quite enjoyable for the most part. It is a bit dull in places, it's a little bit, it does drag for the first hour. It's over kind of selling itself on the villains. It does have a non-existent kind of main protagonist. He doesn't really do much for the most of the film until he actually randomly gets like, you know, invincibility pain threshold powers from you know this kind of ritual he does kind of in a cave and to becomes a COVID-19 superhero. It's a very strange film that has a lot of issues but granted after you get past that first hour of that film and you get to the casino sequence it is a lot of fun and I think you've been hoping the film builds up to really does deliver in a really fantastic kind of third act kind of sequence. It's a bit of a shame I wish I liked this a bit more. Uh, I've seen four Jim Ryan new movies now so I'm very curious to see some of these sequels to these films. Uh, he did do a sequel called The Return to the Chinese Boxer I think back in 1977. I had to check track that down to see if that holds up pretty well. It also did a sequel to the one on Boxer and he's done sequels to practically every single film he has done. So I am very curious to check out some of these really latest sequels and to see if he's delved more into the crazy aspects of, the, of his current career and the violence and the kind of wacky villains and crazy weaponry. And But has he matured? Has he gone back to more of a kind of like, okay, character-based kind of movie but maintaining that kind of crazy aspect? as he just become a kind of B-movie kind of filmmaker by the end. I'm very curious to explore more of his movies. Please comment down below what are your thoughts and opinions on the Chinese boxer? Uh, you know, what do you think of the sequels? Are they really good? Uh, what do you think of Jim Ryan Yu's current career in general? Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions, guys. Please comment down below. In the meantime, after the reviews, signing out.